The sea ice surrounding Antarctica is well below any previous recorded winter level. That's what's shown by satellite data, and it's a worrying new benchmark for a region that once seemed resistant to global warming. Have a look at this map. So this image shows the typical extent of sea ice at this time of year, specifically on the 14th of September. So that's the yellow dotted line. But the actual extent of ice is much less than the median. And as we head into the Antarctic summer, much of the existing ice will continue to melt. Well, let's get more on this and go live now to Mike Childs, who's Head of Policy, Science and Research at Friends of the Earth. Thanks so much for joining us, Mike. So what does that regression of sea ice tell us about global climate shifts? Well, it tells us that climate change is happening faster than we thought. Um, we're seeing these kind of alarm bells going off around the world. We've got the sea ice, as you say, in, in Antarctica. We've got Canadian wildfires we've seen all through the summer, extreme rain, perhaps connected to the dreadful uh, situation in, in Libya. Um, we saw uh, much of Europe um, under record heating heat wave this, this summer. I mean, this is just another wake up call to governments to say we really need to start taking this issue seriously. We really need to start putting oil on the fire of climate change by by, by, by uh, giving the go ahead to new oil and gas licenses or failing to curb emissions. Because, you know, as the sea ice goes and as we see these extremes around the world, we're going to get more and more. Uh, dangerous weather events around the world, harming more people and, and harming our economies and food production. And why is climate change happening faster than we thought? Climate change modelling is, is, is a incredibly complex. You can imagine how complex the, the weather system is around the, around the, the world and, and inherently conservative. So when scientists have been saying over the last decades that you know climate change is happening, we're moving into dangerous territory, we need to take action, um, they've been erring on the conservative side of what might happen. And in reality, things are, are happening faster on the ground. What that means, of course, is politicians need to take action a lot faster than they are. But, you know, here in the UK, we're not. The government's given go ahead to more oil and gas licenses. We're not insulating our homes, which means that we're pouring out excess pollution, uh, as well as people freezing in their homes in, during this energy crisis. You know, there's so much more we could be doing to reduce carbon emissions, making quality of life better and trying to stop this climate change getting worse and worse and worse. And if we go back to the shrinking of the sea ice, people watching at home will have seen the image that we showed of a map indicating uh, what the median level should be. Uh, and the, you can see it again now if you're watching at home. What does that mean for the wider ecosystem and for native species there? Well, the, shrinky, the, the, the polar regions, both in the, in the South Antarctica and Arctic and North, are giant refrigerators for the, for the planet. So they help keep the planet cooler than it would otherwise be. So those shrinking uh, uh, levels of ice help warm up the planet. But of course, as you say, Alexa, there's lots of species that also depend on, on that sea ice and a stable environment. So certainly for some of the penguins you see in Antarctica, that's going to be more and more worrying. We're going to see much more challenging uh, environment for them to, to thrive and, and, and we could lose some species of those. And then in the north, in, in the Arctic, we can see the challenges face the wildlife there. So wildlife will be suffering because of, of this climate change, both in those locations, but around the world, because this extreme weather that's battering the planet is not only harming humans and harming our economies and harming our food production, of course, it's having a devastating impact on, on wildlife as well. And, and, Mike, and we just... really need to start see politicians around the world, including here in the UK, taking this much more seriously. There are really important international climate talks coming up later this year. The UK government is way off track of meeting its promise that it's made internationally. It's got to step up and deliver. And so do other countries. And Mike, that's what uh, I want to come on to now, actually, because it all sounds very bleak and it might make people think, well, it's just too late. But what can be done to reverse this trend? You touched on some of it there. Well, it's, it's not too late. Um, every degree of warming, every fraction of a degree of warming that we prevent, then we're going to prevent significant harm. So we have to do our very best. We can't go backwards. We've already warmed the planet more than we should have done. But what we can do is stop making it worse. And that does mean, you know, investing in, as I said, home insulation. That's good for people's uh, health. It will keep down energy bills, but also stop 
carbon pollution from burning gas in our homes. We can make sure we're investing much faster in renewables. And again, here in the UK, we saw an unsuccessful round of auction for, for offshore wind because the government didn't put enough money on the table. And we can see more action to help people drive either electric cars or get out of their car altogether and, and go and bike and cycling. All these things can make our quality of life better, actually. Um, but well, the government's just not giving it the priority it needs. Well, thank you so much, Mike. It's always good to end on a positive with something that we can do. That's Mike Childs from Friends of the Earth.